following program is brought to you by the Borough of Manhattan Community College, where the American dream still comes true. I'm Alvin Ailey, and welcome to Conversations on Black Dance. Today our topic is Blacks in Film, Video, and Broadway. You know, uh, when most people talk about the Great White Way, they talk about all those wonderful lights in Times Square, all those wonderful lights around the theater in the area. But when black people talk about the Great White Way, they talk about the shows uh, in, in, in Times Square. The shows that seem to all have white themes, white producers, and consequently, mostly white audiences. But things are changing a little bit. The black theater is evolving. The black theater is constantly alive, energetic, and growing. And every now and then, you get a wonderful black show, I mean every now and then, to come in and illuminate a dim, great white way. It seems to me that these shows are brought in mostly because they boost box office sales mostly because the audiences that normally come to Broadway are tired of the same old, uncreative, and dull theater. But unfortunately, it seems to me that once these shows have been there and have boosted box office sales, then they're gone as quickly as they appeared. So we're going to talk today to several panelists who are involved with film, video, and Broadway. One, Francis Morgan. Two, Marshall Romaine. And third, Mr. George Faison, Tony Award winning George Faison, an incredibly talented man who has appeared on Broadway as a writer, as a performer, as a choreographer, and as a director. Our moderator today is Mr. John Parks, and we hope you will enjoy this show. Good evening. My name is John Parks, and today um, we are having panel discussions at BMCC. The topic for today is choreography in film, video, and Broadway. Um, I'm happy to have with me some friends that are in the business, and I would like to introduce them to you. First is M Marshall Romaine who is a dancer, choreographer, teacher, and uh, has done numerous Broadway shows, Arms Too Short to Box with God, True Manisha, uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, The Wiz, West Side Story, just to name a few, um, as well as choreograph for several different companies, wow. modern dance companies, and also off-Broadway shows. In addition, to that, uh, he is a performer and an actor as well. Next, we have Francis Morgan, who is a performer, actress, has been an assistant to, to assistant choreographer, and uh, and who's in from California. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to have her here. Thanks. Next, George Faison. <laughs> <laughs> From, from The Wiz, uh, was in Alvin Ailey's company for a while, it's, and also is a, not only a choreographer, a performer, but also a producer and director. Right. Happy to have every, everyone here today. The first question I'm going to pose to George. Um, the difficulties and advantages of film, of of choreographing for video and film. Are there, are there different advantages and, or disadvantages to fi video and film as opposed to the proscenium stage? Well, uh, I feel that uh, the, uh, the number of images that you can get across uh, as far as film and video are concerned are, are definitely 
for the viewer, you can get inside a dance, whereas on a proscenium stage, you 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 still have that other wall that you're, we, are, we are constantly talking about, and mm -hmm. and very few performers ever really break through that and then really <coughs> communicate with the audience now. But with film, we get close-ups, we get full shots. We can get all of that within the short span of that dance, but uh, you still have the proscenium as a barrier as mm -hmm. far as live performing is concerned, unless you have an extraordinary performer who can communicate you know, to the to the back row. That's why you you know you have when you're training actors or dancers, you know, to reach the balcony, the last seat in the mm -hmm. balcony, to communicate right. beyond the proscenium all the way to the back wall. But you know, I, I was always had thought that live performance is more immediate and there's more of a human impact. And but you think that in but, terms of but I I think that. Um, in recent years, that the theater has waned in, in, in what it's, um, it's given people, mm -hmm. and, and television and, 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 and film have actually taken over because you have more people watching TV. This is a TV Learning and, and, TV and, and, and movie yeah. Yeah. In society that we're dealing with. And as immediately as you can, as you can put it down, uh, that's how, media, uh, 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 how quickly they can you know, take it in and dispense with it and they're on to the next thing. I mean, mm -hmm. that is a disadvantage, is a disadvantage in that, in a sense, you, you know, that's why, in a sense, that media is also just becoming just as stale because, you, you know, you, after a while you say, well, I've seen everything, you know what I mean? Right. And, mm -hmm. it's, and it puts a constant pressure on the people who are working in that you know, to always come up with something new. And so sometimes we, we, we let some of the values that come out of live performing, not that, because that's the basis, I feel. Right, yeah. You know, even though it's not the most accessible, you know, because with the ticket prices and so forth, that's not, you know, mm -hmm. the most accessible. accessible. You know, but, um, you know, we're okay. working with it. You know, and, but, but we always in search of new ideas, new ways of doing things, and mm -hmm. I think that the TV and, 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 and movies and video and all of that are the, are the, uh, are the new, th new It is the new things. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Francis, you have done, um, like most of the panelists, film and video and Broadway. Yes. Um, what medium do you prefer um, to perform in? Uh, if there's any one that you I prefer live. Mm -hmm. I prefer live because um, you get immediate gratification from it. Mm -hmm. So I definitely prefer live. Uh, I have done film and uh, it's a very complicated system so it's very tedious and you're there for hours and hours at a time and you've got to constantly revitalize and constantly uh, get that energy up over and over again and give the same thing you gave when you first got in there at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So with live theater, it's an Im immediate gratification, so I mm -hmm. do prefer live theater. Right, you that's good. Jump right up. How, how, how accessible is the, is the industry for, um, for, for blacks in terms of getting into, um, into film or getting into to video in terms of uh, Video is easier to get into right now because it's a new media. Mm -hmm. For film, I find it, it can be difficult sometimes, you know, especially for, uh, they're, they're more typecasting, not necessarily black or white, but they're looking for a type, you, you know, like for me, I'm a fair-skinned black girl. Well, you're not black enough for this, you know. They, mm -hmm. they, have, they have a particular idea of what they want, and they will not, go and they will not deviate off of that that particular mm -hmm. thing that they want right. so they're very like uh, tunnel vision on certain things and they can't see anything else you can't say well I'm better for that right. you know mm -hmm. uh, maybe so they can, really stick to their they guns stay, in terms usually of in, in my experiences they stick to their guns but mm -hmm. you know I'm quite sure that there's some people that you know that they might change their minds for but so far, they usually stick to their guns on particular things. Mm -hmm. But with video right now, it's such a new media that they're sort of open for anything I hear you. Mm -hmm. at this particular moment. Now, I don't know what will happen in 10 years, but right now, they're very open. So there isn't that, there isn't a kind of a standardization as, no, at this point in terms no, of... No, not yet. ...how to deal with that. And hopefully never. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Marshall, um, again, you have done a lot of eclectic different things. Do you find that in terms of um, 
in terms of video or, or film or Broadway, mm -hmm. modern dance or, or con uh, concert dance or, or Broadway, do you find one that you enjoy in terms of performing in more than the other? Mm. I, I kind of I enjoy uh, all of them that I have done, mm -hmm. and they give each of them gave me a certain satisfaction. Um, a show gives me a total theater sense, and a concert is uh, more emotional and technique, and uh, it's a whole other, other feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for film, I think you have a little bit more. Uh, visual uh, to do more experience like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a, just another thing, um, Marshall. On a little bit different topic. Uh, know that you are uh, doing more and more choreography. Mm -hmm. Do you find uh, the necessity to to choreograph pieces that really kind of deal with your heritage, um, or or? What is the topic matter in terms of most of the pieces that you find yourself being attracted to in terms of subject matter in relationship to choreography? Well, um, uh, n for now, what I'm seeing is uh, I like to paint things that I feel most strongly about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like uh, being a painter. And uh, I like to see what is happening now and what is the subject matter that affects the world or society. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I would like to... Uh, put on stage and vision is another way of teaching, right. you know, teaching the, the public, exactly. you know, sharing yeah. something with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So you and really kind of use, use the choreography as, as a, a conduit or medium in terms of right. expressing, and expressing my, those As far as my heritage is uh, uh, bringing probably the, uh, the way of expressing it, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably finding a, a style or the way to, to say it because everybody speaks a different language. Exactly. So it's uh, probably doing it and my own way of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, showing yes. them. Good. Yeah. George, um, you, again, getting back to uh, Sing Mahal, you sing. Can mm -hmm. you explain some of the experiences that you had in terms of that, in relationship to that? Well, it, first explain um, what it was, because the audience well, may not it, know what... Well, Sing Mahal, you sing was um, a musical about the, um, the gospel singer Mahalia Jackson. And in this, I, and I didn't want to really do her life, but I wanted to do her, do her life story from beginning to end as you normally do a biography or autobiography as it would have been. Um, I wanted to do it, her story, in relationship to our existence in America in that she grew up in New Orleans in, in like the 1920s, you know, and being very black and in the South mm -hmm. and in, uh, the, in New Orleans at that particular time where there wasn't really much opportunity. It's much like, like our life or our existence here. And she, she um, came up through a lot, suffered a lot of prejudice and so forth. Overcoming all of this had to then face on a, a larger scale, even after she became an international gospel singer. Um, she faced uh, the, the same kind of prejudice, but being part of and living through the, the civil rights thing, Science, she yeah. even got another rebirth. So it, it, was, it was her relationship to our relationship is, is what I was dealing with as far as her life. So she was an example of our existence um, here in America from 19, whenever she was born, like 1917, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't remember right now, but from 1917 to 1963. She died in 1972, but I chose that experience because I felt that it would be most relevant to us and a, and a um, profile and courage, you know, so to speak, as far as how she overcame all of these very personal things. You know, you know prejudice comes in all colors, even her mm -hmm. own people. They yes. didn't want to hear all of that kind of singing in the church. So mm -hmm. she ran into a lot of opposition just in the church. So the, in, in the hierarchy of the church, you know, the high Baptist churches didn't want her to sing there. So she ran into that kind of prejudice. She couldn't find a job when she came here from, uh, when she came to Chicago the first time in uh, 1927 and, and had to scrub floors and so forth when she wa really wanted to become a nurse. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only real thing 
that she couldn't really do, that she got a uh, tremendous amount of joy from, was sing. Mm -hmm. So even when she wanted to sing, why, one of why, why am I here? You, this is your, this is your first venture in 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 writing, as well as uh, because I felt like I, I felt very, I felt it like it was me. Mm. Like if I were coming, I came from Washington D.C. Right. coming to you know mm -hmm. New, York New York City, City. Uh -huh. and so forth, and and running into a lot of. Of, of, of the people that really, you know, like you're talented, but so what? Who cares? And only, <laughs> only, only you care. You know what I mean? And only and because, no, you know, it, they don't have to care about you. Mm -hmm. So you make them care about you in, a, in, a, in another kind of way. And you mm -hmm. get around and skirt those, those other issues and sometimes stand up and answer a lot of those issues mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. Just like you were asking, Francis, does it really matter? Yes, it has. The, it has been standardized. It is prejudice. The, a lot of the doors mm -hmm. are still closed. Mm -hmm. A lot of fair-skinned Negroes can, but or black people can, can do more mm -hmm. as as opposed. Men, uh, men are, are stopped, more often than women, you mm -hmm. know, because yeah. it's easier for them to deal with women um, as far as the media is concerned, and because maybe you thought of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just, still yeah. a battle of ideas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and if they didn't think of it, why should they give you a chance to so even get it out there? It so you're there. constantly mm -hmm. fighting in, in it's that. It's like that story of, a, of um, making a better car, someone inventing a better car, like and, 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 and <laughs> Ford buying the, buying the patent for it. So right, that, uh, right. So, so that they keep, keep, a, down. keep yeah. up the market the way it is. Um, get, getting to, getting to um, some of you touch on something that I want to speak on in, in relationship to George, you have done some incredible amount of things. You have been the doctors. You you have doctored up shows. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, shows that had, <laughs> that that where the choreographer it was opening and and it was a shambles, and you have stepped in the last minute and and really doctored the show up and put it on his feet and made it something. Um, done other people's you know work at times, and also have done. A, did a had uh, award-winning show, The Wiz, on Broadway for a number of years, for about five years. Yeah. Um, seven Tony Awards. You you won an ato a Tony for that yourself. A white choreographer. They would say, "What you want?" Look they, they at my face what, first. Say, <laughs> <laughs> look at my face, and then and then ask that question again. Okay. And then look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, we 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 we're, we're kind of joking about it, but um, but it's, you're that's, absolutely you're absolutely but right. Yeah. Um, but I love the theater, and um, not necessarily the people that make up the theater, but I love the theater. I love. Uh, um, getting in front of people. I love making them happy. I love making them cry, making them feel something. And I like them making them feel something for my people. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, people fight for different things in different ways. I have, these are my, my sword and shield. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that keeps me going, uh, even when they say, or don't say, why I didn't do this, or why I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and I didn't start in this business to you know, for their approval anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, so I still have my audience, my following. I don't know why they're crazy <laughs> enough to still follow me, but they yeah, mm -hmm. but but mm -hmm. we're we're still, you know, plugging away. I will still um and always have um they're my source of in, uh, of inspiration. inspiration. You know, mm -hmm. I mean how you know, how else you know Will will I do? You know, a lot of the things that I I really feel. Right. Yeah. You know, well, because you have I have to, to be have to, have I have to, to be it, emotionally yeah. involved, involved as well. You know, it's mm -hmm. not all all just money and you know well, and fame. Money. You know, we like that. Mm -hmm. But they're you know children are you know being taught every day. Put on those tights. Wear the you know, and if you wear this and that and the other, and you'll you're gonna get it. You learn that technique, you study hard, and you're gonna get it. And a lot of our kids are finding out that they do all of mm -hmm. that, and that's not happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, because we we you know, and if I become seduced and go off and and become something or somebody else, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the you know, where's the anchor? That you know, where are the people that you know? But, but you know, the other thing is that I told them that in the beginning, right? <laughs> when how realistic this whole thing is about. I mean, we, 
we are involved in dance and we're involved in theater because we love it and mm -hmm. we get involved in in the educational process of it whether whether it be by choreographing, whether it be by directing, whether it be by actually teaching in the institutional setting, but there's still an education go that's going down. We are still, in a way, teaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? And, you know, we have, we see young people who are coming into the business, and we know some of the adversities that we face in it. You know, we do it because we, we love it. Um, and you see some kids coming into it with other kinds of dreams. Um, how realistic, Francis, is it to to encourage young people to get into a field like this that right off the bat you know that there's some limitations if they are if they are uh, black or a minority? Well, I would advise anyone not to get in it unless you love it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have the love for it and you just have monetary desires or stardom desires and you don't really love it, uh, you're kind of lost right at the first door, when you open up the first door. Right. There's got to be a love and, a, and an, an enjoyment of what you're doing each and every day. So as far as uh, encouraging them, you can't discourage anybody from doing something like that. Because they used to tell me when, when I was at dancing school, um, it's very rough out there. You've got to have a good heart. You have to have a heart for it. Right. And I couldn't, no one could tell me not to do it. I would look at them like they were crazy. And most of the time, those are the people that will really stay in the business a long time. Those are the people that will last a long time. The people that you tell them don't get into the business and they, they don't get into the business, then that, those are the ones that shouldn't be in there. The people that come in there anyway after you told them everything that's horrible about it okay. are the ones that will last. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that, and you couldn't tell them not to come in there anyway. Exactly. They couldn't tell me not to come in. This is all that I've ever wanted to do. I made up my mind years ago that I mm -hmm. wanted to be in the business, and I'm very happy. I have my ups and not my downs, of course, like everyone mm -hmm. else right. does. But, but uh, you're, you're now living in California. But, you, and, but I work in New York. But you work in New York. <laughs> yeah. Make me want to explain a little bit of some, of some of the things that you, some of your early training. Well, I started at Bernice Johnson Theater of the Arts. That's in, in, in Queens. Queens yeah. And then I uh, got accepted into the High School of Performing Arts. Yay! <laughs> and graduated from there and went, I started going to Lehman Bronx Community College and then Lehman College and then I got The Wiz, which was my first show. Oh, George I hired know that. me for The Wiz, oh. yes. And from then I just started working and, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I just went from show to show and moved to, to uh, LA to start doing theater and act. Mm -hmm. Well, I and get married. I didn't know that that was going to happen. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> I was going to become a movie star or whatever I thought. <laughs> but I've been dancing a lot and um, doing a few bit parts as an actress. Mm -hmm. But um, mostly dance, and that's something that I just feel blessed by God for. That I still work a lot as a dancer. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I love most. Right. And um, anything, any, like if acting or singing comes about, that's just an extension of my dance. I know that because the thing that I do the best is dance. Mm -hmm. And so anything else that I do, I know it's an extension of. And anything that I get from that is because of my dance. So now, that's... Well, uh, just another on, on something in relationship with working. Um, how is it working with super luminaries like... Uh, and uh, this question is open to everybody, yeah. uh, such as Michael Jackson or Donna Summers or Stevie Wonder or any any well, of the people. Yeah, I got to work with most of those people, and it's just they're they're the same as anybody else. And I know that sounds real strange, but Michael's a very very introverted man and very shy, and he doesn't talk a lot. And if he talks, he's very you know, hi, how are you? You know, he's just he's not a person to uh, converse with mm -hmm. anyone else but as far as his work is concerned he's just he's on it he does it he doesn't forget if you tell him something one time I'll, I'll go back I said did you hear what I said oh yeah and he'll do exactly what you told him to do exactly he's mm -hmm. just a brain with things like that yeah. and Donna Summers is just wonderful she's just she's just a very talented woman and they're all very easygoing and uh, they know that you're there to make them look better so they really take that into mm -hmm. uh, to account. Into account, yeah. So that's how it is. They're yeah. very, they're very respectful. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't 
you know how you hear about terrorists treating the dancers horribly. No, they're very respectful, which I like. This is, this is a treat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember uh, the Wiz film when Michael was, mm, was involved yes, in that, yes. and we had a lot of time when there was nothing going on during, during the shooting. And uh, anytime you happened to pass him, you would always hear him humming. It would always be, it, he would either sing tunes or doing he rhythms. He was, always, he was always yeah. constantly, constantly, constantly working. I think music is his life. Yeah, I really believe yeah, that. yeah. I, do you feel Stevie Wonder does things like that as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, he's always constantly working on, working on his, his craft. Mm -hmm. And um, you were involved in uh, Tremonitia, mm -hmm. um, Marshall, and work with some of the older oh, Captain folks. Oh, Battle, yeah. Yeah, like... Um, um, it's when I think it's uh, some of the stars, when they are really a star, in, in essence, they're not really, uh, they, they know how to treat people that works with them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's people that I think that uh, wants to be stars, but they're not, right. they don't have uh, that uh, confidence within themselves. So they become very s stagnant about it and they will take it over on some other people that they're not sure about themselves. Mm -hmm. so they will. Mm -hmm push somebody else down. Right, yeah, right. Like Eartha Kitt, Eartha Kitt would uh, help even. She, she would watch the show every night and she will help people, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, like that, that's a star. Right, you know, right. To me. And um, the choreographer for that was... Uh, uh, Jeffrey Holder. Jeffrey Holder, yes. who was another person a, who... A beautiful man to work with. Choreographed yeah. and also directed. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. George, uh, in terms of in terms of video, um, getting back to video, it's a, it's an interesting pet little project with me in a, in a way. In terms of, in terms of video, it, do you think that the dance dance is doing a disservice or a, a service in terms of some of the music videos, um, in terms of the content in the music videos, uh, in terms in relationship to dance in general? What I mean is by what I mean is that through the music videos you reach the most amount of people in the least amount of time, which is something that we always, as performers, want to do. And the music, the content in terms of the music videos, that, that is the difference right there. And yeah. I think that that's what you're really, you know, getting at. Um, what I think, as a serious concert artist or um, or serious dancer, I don't think that uh, video and uh, and all of that means it doesn't mean that much. Mm -hmm. I think, but using it as a tool um, to to um, to record and to the um, to record and to later broadcast a lot of those other serious things that you would like to. I think that we haven't really exploited that exploited, at yeah. enough at all. I don't I, because we're we're still dealing with that. See, dance along with nonprofit deficit spending is going down the drain. I mean, if you're looking for a grant to do it, you know, uh, there are a lot of independent filmmakers and independent video artists. They're pushing their own product out there. But as dancers, I don't think, I think we should take the camera, mm -hmm. go into the studio, and get some, you know, some, a product that we can sell. Mm -hmm. Something, you know, and it doesn't have to be as, as uh, it has to be commercial to the to uh, commercial without um, sacrificing the artistic um, uh, uh, values that, that mm -hmm. you yeah. as a serious modern dance artist or ballet dancer or whatever, you know. But do you see, like do you it. see, I don't know, I just, I, when I see, when I look at television, I see some of the videos, you know, I say, wow, thousands and thousands of people are watching this. This is a great time. Do you, do you see a time where something serious can be done to, on that broader scale, in terms of some things that you might want to see, but I or think you it can be done. It's something that it can, can be, be done. done. But sure. I think we, you know, I don't think that we can do it still by ourselves. You still need, you know, um, you still have recording artists that that mm -hmm. are striving for that, actors that are striving for that. But it's not hasn't really been put into a total concept. Mm -hmm. You're using, they're using, 
break dancing and street dancing without conceptualizing it all, but only just as the vis as a graphic. As a graphic, mm -hmm. and that and that's mm -hmm. it. I mean, we're not using what we have, nor has it been put into a definite concept. Yes, they have a concept for the video, the song, mm -hmm. but they don't have. We don't have a concept for how and a, a, a concept and the context for the actual movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we haven't. You know, we have all of this, yeah. but it hasn't really been put together we'll like together, that. Put together, put right. together. But I, yeah. so, some of that seems like it's, I mean, just, I mean, it's, we, we're we talking with a commercial right. entity anyway, and so that it, it in but relationship to that, it's money that's talking. Right, mm -hmm. and not grants, and yeah. can mm -hmm. you come over here and do that? You know, I think it's a whole thinking. See, we, for so many years we've done it on, well, not me. Uh, mm -hmm. Surely, right. <laughs> like, I can't thank the NEA or what is that or uh, what is that? The, the, the New York State Council, Council of the Arts, Arts. right? For, uh, for helping you out, for helping me out at all. <laughs> Which <laughs> camera's on? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't really say anything about right. that because I use my own money to right. to do that. But that's but that's how dedicated and and um, you know to the mm -hmm. just the idea that I'm talking about. But. Uh, it ha it's going to take that kind of uh, commitment. You were talking about a couple vi uh, video artists that you know right. that want to you know that want to do something. I think that the time for talk is over and, and to get, get real, to yeah, get to real, yeah. yeah. But again, as we were talking about, as we've always talked, there's still we've had you know the people that instilled in us all of this self-esteem, this independence, this drive, this love for dance and the art and all of the things that we're doing. Uh, gave it to us, but now we have to transfer it to somebody. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. And 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 that, to a greater extent, is not happening. Right. It's only because it's only because, you know, um, we are. You know, a lot of us are after that fame that we say is at the end of the rainbow. So we've dropped all of the other things that we that we've been instilled mm -hmm. that have been instilled in us, and we've gone head, you know, along into that, to leaving a complete void as far as where the dancers of tomorrow or even even mm -hmm. the actors or giving them even that that technique where other countries, England, have a great tradition of apprenticeship, of um, uh, you know, serving in a, in a repertory, residencies and so mm -hmm. forth, where a young person will get a love for it, a respect for it, and a greater knowledge and skill about the very thing that they start off at 16 or 17. Right. And when you say, oh, they're doing, they're making a million dollars at 16 or 17, but what are they doing at 32? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, but they're not preparing them for the long, for the long haul, for the long distance mm -hmm. run. Yeah, because, for instance, you were saying that it's, in a way, that this is still very new. Video and it's is very and, new. Yeah, and still really kind of being defined and, well, and things like that. It's the same thing that happened, I guess, about 30 years ago when dancers started getting into film. And where were they going to, they didn't know where to put dancers, like what, for instance, what union to put them under, mm -hmm. how much to pay them. That's the same exact thing that's happening now, and we, we won't get any kind of uh, payment on it until years to come. So it's the same thing that's happening now. We're getting paid decent, decent amount of money now, but when those dancers started out years ago, they weren't, I mean, what we're getting paid, they, they would consider millions of dollars sure. probably. Mm -hmm. So we won't get paid off for this for years to come. So there's, I mean, we're not under, under any kind of union or anything. So if you have a respectable, uh, a star, but, they'll, but we're they'll still the lowest the paid, no right, matter what. But I'm we're saying, still but, the but at the same time, the quality. I mean, you can pay them. We can unionize the pay. We can mm -hmm. get all of those, all of those. But the quality of the that. work still is not going to change. Oh, no. When you're going to be undercut simply by somebody, we can get somebody off of uh, the street, whirl them around a couple times, do you a know, couple video head. tricks, <laughs> and and there yeah. you are, and yeah. and then pay them. And you know, nothing. Not that I'm trying to say that that's bad. Being a producer as as mm -hmm. well, <laughs> right? You know, because you want to do it at a certain cost. But the st I think that the only way that you're going to to make any changes is change the standard of that. Mm -hmm. That's just re-education, re right? But you got to be out there with the kids that you don't really, really want to be with. <laughs> Why do I want to be with that <laughs> that out there? You know, right. when you know when when it's all really the same. I mean, there's yeah. a brotherhood of dance and all of that other business as well. Mm -hmm. You know, but you got to bring them in. They've got to know. You know, so that. 
not to to well, uh, raise the price on us producers, but <laughs> but um, to bring up the standard of unite the front, which is uh, needed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marshall. Again, you have all the all these this impressive list of Broadway shows that you have been in. in, in. Oh God! I, I didn't know you were such a Broadway gypsy. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh. My connection with <laughs> well, the last time on the week, I no got the no sandal soles wear out. Right. You gotta <laughs> keep put on no, no socks. Last year, uh, when open. we did the wigs, the last time I, they finally gave me the robe, the, the gypsy, gypsy robe. robe. That's oh, true. They did. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. You want to explain a little bit about what that robe is? Uh, uh, well, I think it's something they started very long time ago, and yeah, uh, when a the show opens on Broadway, they would bring a good luck, uh, good luck robe, and. Mm -hmm. uh, for the person, and then it goes from shows to shows. And, and each person would add it. something yeah, to it. Yeah, each show would add something to the coat, mm -hmm. you know, and, and pass and they it give on. And they give it to the oldest, the oldest no, gypsy. No, not the oldest. Right. Person, well, like they used the to. Show. Right. Uh, 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 at that time, I didn't Pi, Pi had got it. Pi Douglas? Pi Douglas had really? gotten it. Larry Marshall got it in Coming Up Town, when we mm -hmm. did Coming Up Town. Yeah. 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 Okay. Did he get it again for big deal? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it tells you something when it comes around twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, now you're old. <laughs> <laughs> when you get it twice. When you get it twice. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, 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 can, I guess I'm old enough to remember different kinds of Broadway cycles. Uh, Marshall, in relationship to all the shows that you have done, and in... When I see a cycle, I see Broadway and its ups and its downs. Mm -hmm. uh, um, getting back to the, o the only Broadway show that I was involved with, which is The Wiz, it was a revolutionary time. Oh, it, yes. Another concept in terms of Broadway shows. Broadway was dying yeah. up to that time. And it, it, it always, it in a way, seems it. that there's, there's a, a black show that kind of brings it back up. Is that happening now? Do you see anything like that happening now? Or, or what state is Broadway? Is the state of Broadway at this particular point? <laughs> at this time, to, to me, there's not really anything that has any meat in it, even though we have Bob Foster just have uh, uh, his shows opening, but uh, revivals. But uh, to bring something with class and bring something in, I don't, uh, we don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that will uh, bring, that's, uh, that's what we need to bring Broadway back on, on its feet. Any of you have any ideas or suggestions in terms of what you might think can possibly do that? It's a, it, you know, I guess, George, you were talking about, about educating the young people. You right. Know, and, and, they're, they're, and, and also, like, some of the music videos in terms of all the tricks and stuff like that that happen about street dancing. But is there a real appreciation and a real understanding of where the used heads are really at? Because I think that maybe in terms of Broadway or in terms of video or in terms of, in terms of film, there has to be an understanding who the audience is going to be. Who, what is this audience about? What is the audience for Broadway? What, what Usually white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I don't think that, that too many black performers can complain too much if we're not going to get any black, black producers. producers. Or because if you if if um, you really want to see your face there one year after the other and you want to get really used to it, mm -hmm. there has to be some black producers. Some for black producers. I mean, and we don't that we don't have. And that. and only because it's such a risk. It's even a larger risk than just having a white show. In that identifying that audience and um, cultivating it to the point where they can grow to expect and respect the kind of work that you're going to give them. Something that if they're going to pay, what is it, $45, $50, which is just ridiculous for yeah, it is. a show. You know, they say that, that that's a good ticket, but it's still too much. And why it still costs $5 million, only because the union standard of living like this, I don't mean to get in trouble with the stage hands and all of the other mm -hmm. people. I think everybody should make a fair, a fair a wage, but when you try to send your kid to college on one Broadway show, <laughs> or, or, or your daughter, or your daughter, <laughs> or you try to buy that dream house on one Broadway show, I don't think that that's the real right attitude. Everybody's mm -hmm. really out to make a killing on that one show and so forth and so mm -hmm. on, you know, without, you know, dealing with, 
you know, the reason. When, yeah. Whatever happened to reason as far as production is concerned. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. The rent hasn't changed. The taxes on those buildings, you know, haven't gone up that much. So Koch ain't that bad. Right. But I'm saying mm -hmm. that... Uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, and, and you're, you're always, you're against, you're doing it against the clock. You're racing with the t uh, clock, you know. So it's, a, it's really a... a Constantly. A, 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 what you're saying is it's really a kind of like an economic risk in terms of doing Always, a, a, always. But you go out of town to these other little places and, you know, the ticket is then maybe 20, mm -hmm. 15, 20, 25, maybe $30. And, and, and you can, you see yourself being able to, you know, there's a possibility of making some money. But when mm -hmm. all the theaters are located in one place and, you know, mm -hmm. everything is, is supposed to be there and everybody's mm -hmm. buying for the hottest ticket, the best commercial, mm -hmm. the most Tonys. And when it's at stake like that, you know, the risk is very, very, very high. Is, is that one of the reasons why some no, of but No, but if you want to see your face on, you want to see your face on Broadway? I'm Get sure. yourself a producer that <laughs> looks like you. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Somebody that's concerned mm -hmm. with seeing you there. Mm -hmm. Somebody that wants to see you there. Mm -hmm. And maybe you'll have a career in this. A career meaning not just this season you're going to have a show. You'll maybe. have a show a next of season and on. So all those kids and all those black kids and Hispanic kids and all of those kids in the... Um, Instead of worrying about how many blacks are they going to take into this show, how many Hispanics are they going to, or can I pass, or so forth and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, try to get somebody else interested in it. You know, but, but they're scared by the, the astronomical um, fees. Do we have any black producers? Per se, or do we, do you see, do you see? They want to be, well, they want to be, but they, you know, but, but they've yeah. been, um, you be, yeah. right, but they've been frightened by, uh, and they have to resort to, to every uh, uh, other means, other means to yeah. get their their Things stuff done. through, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm. Which means that I am not above it. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> joking. <laughs> but I want to get mine there, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna, you know, I you just you just try hard and right. and. Uh, but if you want to see yourself there, you've got to be involved. You gotta, you I mean, it's to, not grant time. It's not. It's, it has yes. to be on. It has to be across the board it's on, all, on yeah. all levels. It's, and it takes a lot of courage. I mm -hmm. mean, you got to risk all to to mm -hmm. you know because the you know the winnings are high and all of that business. A lot of belief in okay. the project. Yeah, um, because it a, a lot of times uh, uh, again someone who has done an awful lot of performing or have done. Choreograph and then make some significant steps in terms of performing and also choreography. Have an opportunity has an opportunity to do some what, what I call gravy jobs, uh, mm -hmm. um, like industrials and 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 choreographing the awards and, and things like that. But uh, a lot again in terms of a lot of minority people, they don't really really kind of even get those get those positions on and really kind of put it in those in those positions. What can be done educationally, if anything, to kind of really kind of foster a kind of awareness so that we can get some of the entrepreneurs and some of the business people, some of the backers, some of the angels. Uh, you got to you got to create something that that they can produce, they can, they, that they feel that they can produce and be successful at it. They have to have a win. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so therefore you have to have a very strong personality and have so much faith in the project that you can't, no yeah, one can alter you. Faith, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah, strong right. Strong determination I'm also. Yeah, you can't, you can't faint at, at any given circumstances that comes up in your mind. You got to be able to think, okay, now, well, how can we get around that or get over it, get through it or whatever. Mm -hmm. You got to constantly be able to think about the next step the next thing. or how can I alleviate that problem mm -hmm. and that takes a very very strong personality yeah you know yeah. and mo I guess probably you have to educate the the people before they get out about show business not necessarily just be the lights and yes, the cameras right. but right. the business, business. So that it is a that. business now that's something I had to learn the hard way and I think it would be better for everyone to know that before they get into it that mm -hmm. it's also a business and if you want any more than let's say chorus you have to know that you're selling yourself as a product 
and right. you have to have the utmost faith in yourself as a product. Just briefly, Marshall, just how'd you get into this, this crazy uh, creative world of theater and dance? How, what it's just, again, the love for it. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, the love of being on stage or the love of, it's just like uh, a, a young uh, a child playing uh, with toys, you know. But was, being was it, is there something that you had seen uh, or been exposed to? Or, or yes, a, I think uh, the first time I saw dance was my, uh, my sister, uh, Vivian, in, uh, in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to see her dance, and I fell in love with her. Mm -hmm. And to me, and then the, since that time, I said I wanted to dance. But that was not allowed uh, mm -hmm. in my family. That was not allowed until I came to the United States. And, uh, uh, they took me to see a, a show uh, in the school, and I walked out because it was badly done. And the teacher came after me and asked me, uh, why did you leave? I said, well, she was bad. <laughs> but I had no, no training but be, uh, of watching. <laughs> she said, can you do better? A critic that, is born. <laughs> I, I, I said, yes, I could try. I could try to do better and said, then, you try. Mm -hmm. And the following uh, week I did, and I won a scholarship at Arthur Mitchell's. And that's the way I started and goes from one place to the other and scholarships. And I started dancing. The love was there. And, and you are soloist now with Elio Pomar. You have danced with Chuck Davis's Chuck dance. Chuck Davis, company. Alvin Ailey. Alvin Ailey, repertory yes. company. When I finished school, that was my first company after school. Great. That was Alvin's. So what, is, what, what lies in the future for you? Do you have any any goals in terms of things that you would want to do or things that you want to get a, that you want to accomplish well i'm trying now it's just like i'm in the business and i'm learning a lot it's like a being in school because i'm choreographing uh, more and more and i'm teaching in schools and uh, i'm acting i'm doing different things and i'm loving each one of them i think mm -hmm. that's preparing me for something greater and i'm hopefully going to use all, all that, that and put, to it together, put it together, be a total theater mm -hmm. person, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like you have to educate yourself, mm -hmm. you know, it's just an education, that's probably, I'm going through my education, probably to transmit that later on to my, uh, to create something for myself and also to leave something like a legacy for my people, for mm -hmm. my race or, right. mm -hmm. you know, for the future. That's, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Yeah. Francis, mm -hmm. we t talked a little bit about about you in, in Queens at BJ's, Bernice Johnson going to PA, in The Wiz, but uh, it, this is a new Francis Morgan. This is a, yeah. a brand new Francis Morgan. Yeah. This is an L.A. Francis Morgan, not a, <laughs> <laughs> not a, a, a New York, although we, we, all, <laughs> we all know you. But uh, that, it, so when you went to California, it's a whole new thing. It's like, it really it, was, was it like starting out a it's new? Definitely was starting out anew. I mean, you had a reputation here in, uh, on the East Coast. They couldn't care less. Uh -huh. They couldn't care less. I went out to auditions, and a lot of things that I had to realize, it doesn't matter whether you're the best in California. Because I, you know, sometimes when you know that you, you, you were the best when you dance, you say, well, I've done it better than everybody in there. And usually, are, most of the New York dancers are the best dancers in California anyway. Well, most of the New York dancers went to California. Right, <laughs> right. but uh, you know, in comparison to the dancers that were uh, trained, trained in California, the training is just not the same, which I, I guess I'm very blessed to have been trained in New York. So when I went there, I auditioned uh, for about seven months and I couldn't get a job if they, they couldn't, I couldn't pay them to give me a job. Mm -hmm. And I would be, I would just be great in audition and and do an incredible job and they kept me to the end and sometimes they would say well we just don't know what to do with you and i look around and said you don't know what to give me the job Hi, i'll tell you what to do <laughs> <laughs> but they would say things like that they just didn't know what to do and it, it took uh almost seven about seven months for me to get my first job there it was a very frustrating time because uh, L.A. is not the place where, at least with New York, you can get around and get into a dance company or dance here or dance there or do something, right. teach something mm -hmm. to uh, make you feel like you're still in touch with the keep our lives going. Yeah. I felt mm -hmm. very, I, I felt very strange. It was, I, I think I went through cultural shock. <laughs> Several years ago, about maybe 10, 15 years ago, there was a, a, a vast exodus of... <laughs> 
dancers. You remember that, George? Oh, yeah. Yeah, movie, Leave, movie. Movie. They, they all left. left. They all left. It was no, hardly anyone here. We had really gotten a force together. We had just, you just know, pulled and then it you together. could have stayed here and gotten these nuts together. And, together. and, and yeah. all, the, all the choreographers were working with all the dancers, and the dancers had some wonderful training. And they all got up and left, left. and okay. went out to California to become actors and singers yeah. and this and that. And people were saying, well, you're dancers. And so that they, they learned the trick. They, what they would do is that they would go to California and they said, do you dance? They said, no, I don't dance. I'm an actor. Mm -hmm. And so we lost a lot of dancers from New York. And then they weren't even doing anything in California. Yeah. It's, very, it's a very frustrating um, city for dancers and actors. Mm -hmm. It really is. But I think at that time also, uh, when everybody uh, left, was uh, they were beginning to bring musicals back on. You know, right. that was a lot of musical being created in LA, so everybody was going to do some musical, you know, being on film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, I did a uh, film, Staying Alive, and that was uh, a very strange experience, <laughs> I, I, see, I see a smile here. <laughs> Is there a story in there somewhere? Well, I, I remember uh, I had just had, I just had the baby about a year ago, so I still had that layer of fat <laughs> <laughs> and I auditioned and again you know you you know that you've done you know how well you've we done know. and um, I, Sylvester Stallone called me over and said to me well Francis you know I love your dance and you're exactly what we want but you have to lose weight I said okay he said no I mean lose weight I said well what do you mean he says I j he said just keep enough weight on to keep you breathing you're I want kidding you yes he said I want you to emaciate wow and so, wow. therefore, I went on a diet the next day. I really wow. thank, I thank him for that because um, I, had, I kept the weight on for a long time. So it mm -hmm. was a good incentive to lose the weight. But um, everyone, he was like a, a terror on that set. Wow. Watching out. The pressure's Watching everybody's way. Oh, yes. And, and you know how uh, on the sets they usually have donuts and coffee. Oh, no, no, no. Not on our set. We had bran muffins and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's the only bread we could have was bran muffins, and he had fruit. No Any soda. Butter? No butter. No butter. <laughs> no soda. Tea. That's incredible. And water, and that was it. Tea <laughs> and water. <laughs> Um, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's pretty good. No, you're good. giving George ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, just enough weight to keep you yeah. alive. That must be a lot of. Is is it the pressures is a little bit different also oh, in terms very, of? Yeah, it was very hard for me mm -hmm. because I was around nothing but thin bodies. Yeah. And that was the first time I was ever heavy. Yeah. I've never had a weight problem. Well, what is it? The camera puts on with 10 pounds? 15, I think. 15, I think. Yeah. So therefore, so, yeah. I starved myself <laughs> to just mm -hmm. lose the weight. But the pressure of him just coming around, because he came on the set every day, and he's a very domineering kind of person. Mm -hmm. And when he comes on, it's like everybody just got very still. Mm -hmm. Very, very still. George, well, you have worked with um, singers and and actors and done so many different kinds of things that we 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 know about now but what about your early early training um i understand you're from dc well, i'm from washington and um well i wasn't in uh, i hadn't gone to school or anything and i would just you know you would just watch the the ed sullivan show on sunday night and you know, you just you never think of anything. You just and you watch the dances, you would enjoy them, and so forth. And not until I went to high school did I, uh, you know, really that they had a drama department. So I got into that, you know, and they and then they we we did a little folk dancing and all of that, and I like I really liked that. And then one weekend, a friend of mine said, "There's an audition." I said, "A what?" An audition. Yeah. So they had what to teach that? me the word. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, audition, and, and we should go. I said, for what? And they said, uh, um, well, you have to go and, and, and sing and dance. And I said, you know, I knew I liked it. That's, and that was game. I didn't care. So I mm -hmm. went um, with this friend of mine over there. And this was for a light op opera company that did get, like things like Kiss Me Kate and uh, Damn Yankees and, and um, a lot of the famous. Um, um, Musicals. Uh, this was in D.C. This was in D.C. Mm -hmm. The American Light Opera Company, and uh, there are a lot of people that Georgia Engel, 
that was mm -hmm. on Mary Tyler Moore. Mm -hmm. Well, she was in it with me. Um, and uh, well, you've not, you've seen some a lot of the actors in commercials and so forth. So we went in, we auditioned and everything, and we came out. And I said, "Well, did you make it?" And he said, "No." And I had. And I said, "Well, I did. <laughs> now tell me what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I go from here? Right, what do I do from here? You know." So that was that was. And that's your how I, Yeah, that was my beginning. And then into it. the dancers were talking. You know, and then once I went, the dancers were talking about arabesque. Chenets, passes, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I had to go to ballet class and, and start your and training. start training. So then I started at Howard University. Well, I'm I'm very glad that that you did. The dance world is very glad that that you continued, got started, and continued because uh, we're going to hear a lot more from Mr. George Face on mm -hmm. in the years in the years coming up. And you've been an inspiration to. Uh, dancers and, and younger choreographers to like. I want to thank everybody for uh, participating in this panel discussion uh, this pleasure. afternoon. I want to thank Francis Morgan, yeah. thank you. Marsha Romaine, You're welcome. and George Faison. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed Blacks in Film video and Broadway as much as I have. Be with us next time for Conversations on Black Dance.